Over the centuries, imagination has propelled man to levels of artistic excellence. The fine strokes, the complexities of spacing, the ambient colors of a brilliant painting underscore the epic achievements of humanity. Now, you too can experience these epic wonders of mankind with Big Softy bathroom tissues. Like Rembrandt, Big Softy's engineers have used their imagination to create a bathroom tissue that's soft, yet strong and pliable. So try Big Softy bathroom tissues. After all, doesn't your bottom deserve a Rembrandt? So, what do you think, boys? <coughs> what is this Rembrandt shit? We're pitching toilet paper, not art objects. I was merely equating the creative genius of Rembrandt to the creative possibilities of personal hygiene. People don't care about Rembrandt. He croaked without a dime in his pocket. Rembrandt was an artistic phenomenon. Morris, the guy was a schmuck. If I had his talent, I would have died a billionaire. Well, you ought to be awarded the Nobel Prize. The bottom line, Morris, is that sales are down. Now, those creative campaigns are passe. The clients are interested in the bottom line. You really went overboard this time. Maybe you ought to take a rest. Set up the bar. Ice water and clean ashtrays for all my friends. That's what I like about you, Codman. You're as generous as you are humble. Thank you. Leave the bus. Hey, turn it up. Hmm? The, the TV, turn it up. Another financier from Wall Street was arrested today at his office in downtown Manhattan. The arrest of Brendan Collins brings... That's Brendan Collins. It's very astute of you, considering they just announced his name. No, no, I mean... I know him. I went to business school with him. So they finally caught the clever bastard. Hey, you think I look good in pinstripe? Definitely. Oh, yo, I like these shoes. They're the soles. These breeches? Must have been some party. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah. Hey, this must have been good. So what's wrong? Truth, justice, and the American way. I've been struggling my whole life to maintain this shred of artistic integrity, and nobody cares. Said my music wasn't commercial enough. Now my goddamn commercials aren't commercial enough. I can't win with this public. Then why don't you go back to music? Oh, please. 
Advertising is only a temporary thing anyway. Something that you could do yeah. just so you could make enough money to do what you really want to do. Please, we've been over this a million times. I could never make it in the music business. It was just some sweet teen dream never panned out. Of course, Codman, that is a defeatist attitude. And I won't tolerate it. You possess all of this creative genius and it and it's being wasted on crap. The world revolves around crap, darling. And you just gotta wallow in it if you're gonna make a buck. You are making me nauseous. Well, you better get used to it. Because from now on, you're gonna see a new Morris Cotman. I'm gonna play their game, and I'm gonna play it so goddamn well they're gonna choke on their own horseshit. <laughs> well, then, if that's the new Morris Cotman, I don't wanna have anything to do with him. What? Wait, come here. I've had better days. Policemen swinging riot sticks stormed into a crowd of more than 2,000 demonstrators in Prague Central Square today, pinning me to the ground. Broker. Heaven. Stop. Hey, Morris. Hey, Morris. Hmm? I haven't got all day. Wake up. Where are you? Why did you take a sort of a wild guess? You look like my old Latin professor from Andover. I'm the Lord, you twit. Dodd? What are you doing on my TV set? Well, the burning bush entrances are out this year. I have to compete with prime time. I must be dreaming. You know, I think my backhand is really improving. I'm sort of getting over on the ball, sort of like Ivan Lendl. What do you think? That's pretty good for a supreme being, isn't it? Watch this, look. Can I help you with something? I haven't done anything wrong, have I? I'm not dead, am I? Did I drink too much scotch? No, 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 nothing like that at all. That'll all come a little bit later. No, no, I'm here uh, as a fellow Ivy Leaguer to give you some advice. Well, that's very considerate. What should I do with my life? Well, I think you ought to go into business. My own business? Maybe you're right. You, you, you think so? Do I think so? Of course I think so. I'm the Lord. Capital L. Capital H when him is in the middle of a sentence. My own business, huh? Yeah, I think you should incorporate. Subchapter S under the federal code. If you do that, it gives you a better tax break. You don't have to pay twice the tax as you do in a regular corporation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Of course it makes sense. You keep forgetting I am the Lord. I'm not a second-rate, fly-by-night public accountant. <coughs> One other thing. Don't take in any partners. You don't see me with any partners, do you? Right, right. No partners. Well, what kind of business should it be? Well, I'm late. I've got to go off and play tennis with the CEO of General Motors. I understand. Thank you. Really, thanks a lot. With the Reverend Billy Bob McElroy. My friends, my friends, God, God is good. But most importantly, as we all know, he's a southerner. He's a white southerner, and he's a Republican. So today, my friends, I want you to praise the Lord. I want you to praise him by holding hands. Come on, everybody. Grab hold of the person next to you, and close your eyes, and reach down into your soul. 
reach down into your soul and praise God Almighty, everybody. For you good people at home, I want you to reach down into your soul, reach down into your heart, and reach down into your pocketbook and send me the Reverend Billy Bob McElroy your check for $25 and send $25 to my political action committee. And remember, we accept all major credit cards. Oh, hello, Mr. Cardman. How are you? Fine, Herb. How are you? Oh, I, well, I... I uh, what, what, what can I do for you? Well, first off, I'd like an accounting of my personal assets. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I'd like to start a corporate checking account transferring what I've got in my money market account. Well, first we'll need some basic information. What is the name of the corporation? The name is Religion Incorporated. Religion Incorporated. That's an odd name. Will you be manufacturing religious articles? Oh, no, nothing like that. Um, it's more of a service-oriented company. Oh, really? What exactly will you be doing? Well, I'm starting my own religion, and uh, Religion, Inc. will be the corporate holding company. I see. Yes. Well, uh, you see, God spoke to me and told me to start the corporation and uh, Subchapter S. Oh, God spoke to you and told you to start a Subchapter S corporation. Yes, a really nice guy, very wise in the ways of business. Told me no partners, uh, which I interpret to mean no voting stock for anybody but myself. Would you interpret it the same way? Oh, yes, of course I would. Would you excuse me for a moment? Uh, certainly. Look, I, I know it sounds weird, but I know what I'm doing. Oh, I know you do. I'll be right back. What is it, Whipple? I need your okay in this corporate account. What's the problem? <laughs> That's Morris Codman. He's a good customer. I know, sir. Well, then what do you need me for? He, I think Mr. Codman has gone off the deep end. Oh, really? He wants to open an account for a new corporation. Not unusual. I asked him what the company would do. He said it's going to be a holding company for a new religion that he's starting, and that God told him to do it. Oh, and that God gave him what I would call some very good tax advice. That's unusual. What was the initial deposit? He's committed over a quarter million dollars. What the hell's the problem? I'd open an account for a guy who thought he was Jesus Christ if there's a quarter of a million dollars in it. So you want me to open the account? Hell yes. Besides, those advertising people are all kind of nuts. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's religion will work. <laughs> we'll just have you fill out these signature cards and a corporate resolution form. And we'll be all set. Thank you. What kind of religion are you starting? Not sure yet. You're not sure yet? Well, we'll be commissioning a market study first, you know, a poll. It'll give me an idea of what the majority of religious consumers want and which ideas will sell the best, and then, as usual, I'll uh, come up with a great concept. That's very interesting. We, the bank, would be most interested in following your progress. Well, uh, I'll put you on our mailing list. Thank you.
Let's go have lunch. Morris, I'm really busy. I have to be in court in an hour. Are you defending another rapist? It's not funny. I, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. And, and I, want, I want to apologize for last night. Yeah? Well, actions speak louder than words. Well, I'm done with advertising. Oh, they fire you? <laughs> um, let's just say the office was too small to accommodate the number of egos inhabiting it. Come on. I want you to go. Run that by me again? A religion. Look, I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you see, I had a vision the other night after you stormed out of the apartment. Oh, a vision? I spoke to God. He told me what to do. Morris, if this is another one of your stupid jokes, I fear you reached an ultimate low. I'm serious. And you can help me. I'll run the business. You give me legal advice. You'll make a bundle. God, man, how the hell are you? Hey, uh, Anderson, how's it going for you? Couldn't be better, but we miss you back at the agency. Yeah, I'll bet. I don't even know who you are anymore. You're consumed by this desire to vindicate yourself on society. Don't give me your third grade psychology, okay? I mean, your idea of a perfect lover is somebody who wages a, a one-man crusade against the system. I can't pretend to do that anymore. Look, babe, I'm just, I'm going with the flow, you know? I'm gonna give people what they want, immediate gratification. Ooh, what a fine contribution to humanity. I don't call being a public defender the height of artistic awareness. Well, at least I defend the poor and the destitute. More like the guilty and sleazy. You are an asshole. Come on, Debbie. 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 Women. Sometimes you wish you had that extra rib. Put it over there. Put all the furniture over there till I finish painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Debbie, where are you? Shall I send the next applicant in, Mr. Codman? Yes. And Peggy, you can call me Morris. Next. Nerd ball. Nerd ball. Geek. Mm. Third ball. Name? Bing Harrison. Job experience. I was host of Sell Your Dignity. <clears throat> Sell Your Dignity? Yes, it's, it's the game show. The one where the contestants have to dress up and act like farm animals in front of complete strangers in order to win large sums of money and major appliances. Well, uh, thank you. Could you ask Peggy to send the next applicant in on your way out? I'm, I'm very versatile. Look, I really need this job. I even do impersonations. You're a hooker? I know you are, but what am I? Oh, where's my hat? Us, oh, on the floor? Don't you just hate it when that happens? Oh, well, that's it. No more? Oh, my God. How many did I see? 37. Jesus. Not one of them fits the bill. All right, call the modeling agency. Have them send over another batch tomorrow. Right. If you don't mind me asking, what exactly are you looking for? Someone with a little charisma. Someone who can act as the spiritual leader of a religion. Right. Hmm. You did say you had enough money to pay my salary for six months, didn't you? You think I'm totally irrational, don't you? Oh, no, I'd never think that about you. Come on. We're going to be working together. Now, let's be uh, honest with each other. You think I'm irrational, right? Well, not irrational. Then what? Stupid. No. Possessed. No. Erratic. No. Crazy. Yeah, that's it. Crazy. I knew it. But believe me, I'm totally sapient. I am as sane as the chairman of the board of General Motors. You'll see. As you can see on page 24, 89% responded in the affirmative. So even with the error factor of, say, plus or minus four, the wealth issue seems to dominate. Yes, it's consistent with my data as well. Data. Data. So what you're saying is that by cross-tabulating the data from the moral and ethical questions in the poll, 
With the need and desire questions, the only issues that rate higher than basic morality to the average Americans are wealth, success, and power. Is that correct? On a subconscious level. Of course. These findings are very interesting. Yes. Now, what about the competition? Oh, yes, the raw data for these questions appears on pages 68 through 91. Data. Data. As best I can figure, you're up against some very entrenched competition. And that's not surprising, considering most of these religions have been around for centuries. So what did all that mean? It means that foremost on people's minds is the acquisition of wealth and power. Sorry. You paid 12 grand for them to tell you that? You could have asked me. No. It also proves that people will forsake morality to achieve that wealth. That's news to you? You must have lived a sheltered life. No, you don't understand. Not only does this poll prove it scientifically, it shows me how and where to reach these people and how to sway them most efficiently. So what? So, someone with intelligence and socioeconomic savvy, me for instance, can, with the right marketing, capitalize on these emotions and make history at the same time. So what's this religion going to be about? Well, the message will be simple. It's okay to be selfish. You should seek power, wealth, and status because personal selfishness ultimately benefits the public interest. Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. It's like a combination of Adam Smith's invisible hand concept and Newton's theory of natural order. Who? What? It, it's like taking the worst of capitalism and splicing it with the best of Christianity. Christianity. Right. Because in the process of being selfish, you're actually helping your fellow man. A genetic miracle, if you will. We will create a new moral code that can be used as a mental crutch to help ease the conscience of the average person. It sounds more like a genetic freak to me. What are you going to call this Frankenstein monster? Well, let's see. All right, let's see. Protestants are called such because they, they protested the dominant religion of the time. So in keeping with that type of name, um, well, since ours is a faith that doesn't protest so much as it prefers, we'll call it the preferent church. <laughs> the preferent church. God, it's brilliant. It's also not copyrighted. Um, uh, you didn't hear that, right? Why, sir? What are you talking about? Right. I hope my paycheck doesn't bounce. Any models catch your eye today? Unfortunately not. Well, we've just about covered every modeling agency in New York. Maybe you're looking for your spiritual leader in the wrong place. Ever thought of trying Wall Street? That's very funny. Mm. Well, I'm going. See you tomorrow. Right. Listen, shut off the light on your way out. I think better in the dark. Whatever you say. He's Looney Tunes. She wears that see-through nighty, and that's good enough for me. Give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. It was good enough for me. <laughs> that was very good. I didn't realize that there was someone here. Would you like me to come back to clean the office? Oh, no. No, come right in. So what's your name? Ian. Ian. Ian what? Ian Clarity. My name is Morris Cotton. How do you do? Fine. Can I help you with anything? Or are you just fascinated with people who are less fortunate on a socioeconomic level. Hey, did you graduate high school? High school? Shit. I have a PhD in philosophy from NYU. You're kidding. What the hell are you doing cleaning offices? It's a long story. Let's just say I was one of them naive idealists who came of age during the 60s and when the 70s came around, I couldn't see it as a passing fad. So rather than conform and become a money-hungry clone in a pinstripe, you decided to drop out. More like drop down. 
So how's it working out for you? Truthfully, one's dignity gets pretty vulnerable pushing the broom. I mean, being poor and humble isn't quite as tranquil as I thought it would be. Hmm. You know, you're very distinguished looking. One might even say you have a certain charisma. I wonder how you look without that beard. Are you queer or something? No. Maybe I should explain. You see, I've got a uh, job opening, and it's got certain requirements, and I haven't met anyone who fits the bill. In fact, you've come the closest. A job? Is it better than emptying trash and dusting offices? I'd say so. See, I'm starting my own religion, and uh, I need a spiritual leader to represent the faith. Your own religion. <laughs> Man, that's the stupidest idea I ever, I ever heard. <laughs> Pays $50,000 a year. But then again, a lot of great men were called stupid in their day. What does spiritual leader entail? Making speeches, television interviews, TV commercials, possibly your own TV show. Sounds dull. I'm used to the fast-paced life of the janitorial service industry. <laughs> Would I get paid vacation? Sure, but you gotta shave that beard. It's a small amount of sacrifice. What sort of philosophy will I espouse? You're gonna preach that it's okay to be selfish and seek wealth, status, and fame because it ultimately promotes the public interest. You're talking like laissez-faire, capitalist theory? Shit sounds like a white man's religion. <laughs> I don't know if I should mention this, but have you noticed that I am black? That's the beauty of it. With a white guy preaching this crap, I'd alienate too many minorities, but with you, it's perfect. I'm gonna get the white people anyway, but with you, who knows what markets I could tap. Boy, you are nuts. But for 50 grand, I'm willing to make an ass out of myself for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> You're a low-level executive at a major corporation. Around lunchtime, you pass by a colleague's desk and notice a memo, nearly completed, detailing a brilliant idea that would boost sales. You steal the idea and hand it in to your boss as your own. And now you feel guilty. But you shouldn't feel guilty. By looking out for your own interests, you are in fact helping your fellow man. How? Now you can send away for a new book called 101 Ways to a Job Promotion which gives you detailed information on how to increase your status and salary in 101 ways and explains why your own advancement is in the public interest. Just send $7.95 to The Preferent Church Printing House, Box 5000, New York, New York. The Preferent Church, because it's time to feel good about yourself. What do you think? It needs work. Who wrote it? You did, Morris. Then again, I see it having great potential. Get abroad with bigger knockers next time and have her use a camera that looks more phallic. I want this commercial to have magical implications. Okay, got it. What about the media buy? All TV stations in the tri-state area air during primetime news. You know the demographics. Mm -hmm. Now, any luck in getting Ian a speaking engagement? Uh, well, so far, the only two groups that have shown interest are the Young Republicans and the Northern chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. The Klan? Yeah. Huh. Ian may be at a slight disadvantage with them. Let's go with the Republicans. Got it. <laughs> Look like a real class act. I feel like an imposter. You're gonna eat them up when you get out there. <laughs> Not with this speech, I won't. This shit reads like the Encyclopedia Botanica. You just do the best job you can, and you remember there's a big bonus lurking somewhere on the horizon for you. How inspiring. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Break. Can I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, the Preferent Church is proud to introduce to you our spiritual leader, Dr. Ian Clarity. Thank you. Thank you so much. As you heard, my name is Ian Clarity, and I'm here today to tell you about a new religion called the Preferent Church, which espouses a philosophy that you may find agreeable. 
the Preference Church was formed because we believe there is a great abyss present between religious beliefs and their practical applications. We think the Preference Church has bridged this gap. We believe that if an individual truly acts selfishly, he would work toward producing something that would um, be of value to others that, um, and that directly benefits the public, uh, the public interest. Look, for years I have been inflicted with the religious dogma that religion and business don't mix. They say we must be fair with our fellow businessmen, that we must be honest and good, that we must forsake the extra dollar for peace and harmony. I forsake nothing. Religion must and will embrace the essence of business. He's deviating from the speech. That is why Should we stop I him? Offer you no, 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 he's on to something. We believe greed and self-interest are beautiful. As a boy, the minister told me to give to others, that it brought you closer to God. I say poppycock. The fact is, we are selfish. I'm selfish, you're selfish. It's in our nature. So let's stop fighting it and start treating it like a friend. We could use it to make our society run better. The more selfish, the more we make, the better off we feel, the better off our brethren be. So be selfish. It's good and good for you and good for your fellow man. Our country was made great because men like Vanderbilt and Gould, the robber barons of our golden years, pursued self-interest and greed at the expense of the weak. The game was survival, and they brought fantastic wealth into their lives and into America. These men reached their potential because they lacked conscience. Conscience, ladies and gentlemen, is the sin of capitalism, the sin of the preferent. Conscience is an artificial, intangible, manufactured by established religions in order for them to maintain their hold on society. I say that it's time that we broke the shackles of the traditional religions and believe in something that works. Join me! Join me! Forget about being true to God. Join the preference church and be true and be true to yourself. What exactly is this prayer book? That is a book with 365 individual thoughts for the day. The devout church member reads one a day, and each thought is an insightful quote from a famous preferent church prophet. Prophet? Like who? Like John D. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, Adam Smith, Napoleon, Ronald Reagan. Hey, that's great. Yeah. Look, here's one. An old English proverb, a fool and his money are soon parted. I'll take one. How much do I owe you? Thirteen ninety-five. Oh, thank you. So you see, for an annual contribution of twelve hundred dollars, a preferent church representative will come to your business once a month, and he'll preach to your employees and say whatever it is you want them to hear. I'd like to say from the outset that though we espouse certain beliefs about how to act towards your boss and your fellow employees, I won't tolerate them in this organization. Oh, in other words, practice what you preach, and you get fired. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to have staff meetings like this from now on, once a week, so we all have a good handle on what's going on. Okay, let's get started. We'll begin with the finance. Tom. All right. Well, gross receipts, as usual, are on a steady increase. Book sales are 30% over last week. However, contributions after speaking engagements ran even due to a plateau in the number of events. Well, that'll change when we can schedule more events. Thanks, Tom. Let's go to publishing. Dave. Well, as Tom says, book sales are booming, which means we'll have to reprint fairly soon. How do we stand? Well, the book 101 Ways to a Job Promotion is almost out. We've got 10,000 copies of Extramarital Affairs, a handbook, 
We're completely out of how to make big bucks off the poor and destitute. Okay, reprint poor and destitute immediately. Let's start running those TV spots again. Pull the spots on job promotion, reprint those, but keep running the ads on uh, extramarital until we run out. Right. Sam, how are we doing on publicity? Well, it's pretty good. Ian's speech to the Chamber of Commerce was covered by local news. We've got articles coming out this week in the Times and next week in the Journal. I'm also working on the editor of People magazine. What's your name? Gladys. What church did you belong to, Gladys? Well, I was a born-again Christian. Now you're a preference. That's right. What made you convert? Well, I had high blood pressure and a weak heart. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I walked, I got out of breath. And my doctor said I was very sick. And all the while, I was working down at that local charity, trying to help out my fellow man. Oh. Then what happened? Well, I started to look out for my own needs. Mm -hmm. I stole from the charity. Yes. I cheated on my husband. Come on. Come on. I sold my body to a stranger. All right, yes. I spit on a blind person. All right. <laughs> oh. Well, I can see you've gotten into the spirit of being a true preference. And how do you feel now? feel great. The doctor says I'm all cured. He's a preference, too. Oh, I owe it all to you, Dr. Clarence. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Why don't you show us how healthy you are? Job for us, would you? Come on. Come on. Come on up there. Yes. Come on. Yes. Joe, let's go with the cancer bit this time. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Joseph. Well, Joseph, <laughs> what church did you belong to? Well, I was a Presbyterian. And now you're a preference. Why? <laughs> well, um, my doctor told me that I had cancer. I didn't have very long to live. Why were you sick, Joseph? Well, it's because, um, like you were saying before, I wasn't being true to myself. You know, I'm a stockbroker, but I always tried to get my clients the best deal. Then what did you do? Well, I started looking out for my own self-interest. You know, if one client would phone me up, say, wanted to buy a thousand shares of a stock, I'd phone up another client and tell him to sell a thousand shares of the same stock. You know, one would buy, the other one would sell. They'd both lose money, but I'd make two commissions. <laughs> Well, my, my cancer is in remission. Oh, I would just like to say I came to New York two weeks ago to drive taxi cab. I couldn't speak any English, and my customers were ripping me off blind. That is when I decided to give up Hindu faith to join Preferent Church. Thanks to the Preferent Church, I now speak perfect English. Shit, piss, fucking son of a bitch. I got my green card because the Preferent Workshop taught me how to bribe officials. And now I make even more money because I learned how to speed up meter machine and cab. Now I can cheat my customers. I feel like a real American citizen. Thanks to you, Preferent Church. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I feel the power of self-interest. Yes, I do. These people have been cured because they believe in the miracle of self-interest. I'm talking of a preference society, a utopian world. Never help a fellow human being, never give charity, unless, of course, it's tax deductible. <laughs> Remember, the road to utopia is paid with bad intentions. Now, if you all believe, I want you to do as I say. Raise your left hand in the air. Come on, everybody. Raise them up. Come on. Raise them up. Now, with your right hand, reach in your pocket and take out your wallet and hold it out in front of you. 
Yes. And with this holy water, Amen, brother. I will come around to each and every one of you and bless your wallets individually. Amen. But first, take your left hand and reach in your wallet and pull out a $10 bill. You must sacrifice that $10 to prove you believe in yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That was terrific, Ian. That was great. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Are you all right? Yeah. No, listen, you have to have no. this pain checked out. <laughs> it's nothing. I used to get it. I used to get it a lot when I was a when I was a kid. I... Hmm. Whipple, get in here. Yes, sir. Isn't that Morse Codman's outfit? Um, uh, that's right. And you didn't want to open the new account. That's why you'll never succeed in life, Whipple. Now get Codman on the phone. I want it all. Oh, Lord. Don't you think there's some worthy humanitarian cause that we can devote our life to? Hey, cause is my middle name, babe. Mm, Morris. Tell me something dirty. Ugh, oh, <laughs> Morris. Huh? Wait for your luncheon. Shit. Hope you don't mind sitting at the bar. I feel more at home somehow. <laughs> no problem. I like bars too. Morris, how's it hanging? Deke, couldn't be better. How you doing? Good. Been shit faced lately? <laughs> Deke, this is my banker, Joe French. Oh, Christ, sorry, buddy. What do you have? <clears throat> a bike. Right it is. So, uh, what do you want to talk about? Well, uh, I hear you're doing quite a business lately. Yeah, sales are up. Watch the foam, Joe. Beer mustache, a dead giveaway back at the office. You all right, Joe? You want a Heimlich? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sales are uh, up, up, up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I've seen at your bank statement here your your daily balance summaries are on a healthy and steady increase. All he needs a good idea, Joe, and the ambition to follow through on it. This is America. <laughs> America, yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. Uh, I'd like to know more about this uh, Religion Inc. Well, we're just in the initial phase of the business plan now. Uh, we're test marketing the religion in the region, but when finances warrant it, we're going to go national. Nothing wrong, you look so happy. Tell Tom and the rest of the people from finance to get into my office pronto. The bank is going to lend us a shitload of money. We are going national. We have the Tucker Church specialize in bringing new life to American business. We believe that capitalism and religion can work hand in hand in restoring the American dream. Bottle scotch, and you saw God. And you know what? That does sometimes happen to me, but I usually <laughs> drink amaretto. Uh, yeah, no, I'm a scotch man, and um, you know, I saw God. I mean, it's a vision. Uh, I saw God the way I'd always pictured him. He had a uh -huh. tennis racket, he had a big back in it. Dr. Hugh Clarity, and I think he's involved. But he's the spiritual leader. The spiritual leader, and it says he's voted number third in popularity in the United States at this very moment. Sure. I used to advertise. But it's only number three? Well, they have Sylvester Stallone and the Pope, and then they have Dr. Ian Clarity. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, well, Stallone is a great actor, right? And the Pope does have a very effective public relations strategy. Join the Prepper Church. Come grow with us. Religion Inc. Good morning. Morse Codman, please. May I ask who's calling? <sighs> Morse Codman, uh, tell him it's his old partner in crime. Uh, he'll know who it is. <laughs> Brendan, you son of a bitch. Hey, Codman, what's going on? Well, you tell me. Last I read, you were going to prison for insider trading. Ah, uh, not old Brendan Collins. That was just a minor scrape. Minor scrape? Shit, I thought Wall Street was going to be run from uh, Alcatraz there for a while. I ratted in a few colleagues. They let me off easy. No problem at all, my friend. 
Now, you just sent a few of your closest friends to prison, huh? Well, they were a bunch of shit bums. <laughs> Brendan, you are corrupt. Thank you very much. But I understand you're doing pretty well. Yeah, you could say that. Well, listen, uh, we've come a long way since you and I were in Wharton School together. Huh? Yep, long way. What are you going to do with this new religion of yours? What do you mean? Well, how about taking it public? Uh, make a stock offering, Amex, over the counter, something like that? Well, the thought has occurred to me. Well, let's have lunch and talk about it. All right. Morris, I gotta go. All right, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. What a sleazeball. Sucker. Jesus. We realize this is a highly unusual move holding a press conference to announce a new stock offering, but we felt that since Religion Inc. is the first corporation in the religious business to go public, that you might want an opportunity to ask us questions directly. <laughs> Miles. Thank you, Mr. Codman. Uh, simply, what is the initial share price set at? The initial share price will be $3 a share. That reflects a price-earning ratio of 5. <laughs> Michael, thank you. Uh, Mr. Collins, what role do you play in this transaction? Uh, <clears throat> I'm merely a financial advisor to the church, but I'd like to make one thing very clear. Until I read about the Preferent Church, I wasn't a very religious guy. Now I have something to believe in. And hell, if I can be converted, anybody can. <laughs> Do you plan to buy Preferent Church stock? As you guys say about me in print, I know a good deal when I see one. <laughs> Dr. Clarity, don't you think that this is setting a dangerous precedent by mixing religion and business? As far as I'm concerned, religion is business. Like any other corporation, we're simply providing a service that satisfies our customers' desires. Besides, uh, we're just capitalizing on a demand that's been around for a long time. Time, we wouldn't have been so successful otherwise. Disturb me. No calls. Debbie Cosgrove. Debbie? Hi. It's me. Hi, Morris. That's it. Hi, Morris. We haven't spoken in months. All I get is a hi, Morris. What'd you expect? Well, uh, congratulations might be nice to start. I don't know if you've been reading the papers lately. I've become quite famous. I know. I saw your face in Business Week. Yeah, bad photograph, huh? No, I thought it was rather well done. Made you look like an asshole. Jealousy will get you nowhere, Deb. You know, Morris, I used to think that despite it all, there was an element of decency in you. A possibility of redemption. But you know, now I'm not so sure. In fact, I rather doubt it. You seem to get such a thrill out of taking advantage of these poor people who are too naive to know any better. I mean, don't you realize that you could be using your brains to educate these people on the tragedy in this world instead of promoting it to make a buck? Come on, babe. Give me a break. Rome wasn't built in a day. You are impossible. Don't ever call me again. I suppose that means a dinner at the plaza is out of the question? Bingo. She really loves me. You have some reason to doubt you want to go over with me? Yes, Cardinal. It seems the latest figures on church attendance have dropped dramatically this month. And this follows a sharp decline last month. 
What are you saying? I'm saying there are fewer people going to church. And other research points to the fact that there are fewer Catholics in the United States than there were a year ago. A lot fewer. What is the cause? According to the statistics we've seen, the only religion that's on the upswing is this new one, the preferent church. Oh, those heretics. Oh, dear. What are we to do? Well, Catholicism isn't the only religion that's seen a sharp decline. In fact, I've been in contact with both Rabbi Bernstein and Bishop Chauncey, and they feel we ought to have a summit meeting of representatives from all the traditional faiths to discuss this problem. You all see me? That's right, Reverend. How can I help you? It's how we can help each other. How's that? Well, Billy Bob, I understand that contributions to your ministry are way, way down. <laughs> well, now, how in the hell you know that? I got my sources, but that's not important. What's important is that you're losing parishioners left and right to the preferent church. That shit digger, Ian Clarity, would not know God if he bit him on the ass. The point is, Billy Bob, that if something disastrous happened to the preferent church, we could both make a hell of a lot of money. Well, now, why would you want that to happen? I thought you had lots well, of money invested in it. This is true, this is true. I stand to make a little bit of money if they do well. But if I knew something bad was going to happen, and I knew when it was going to happen, well, shit, I'd just sell short, and we'd both make a hell of a lot of money. Why do you need me? You're the key. You see, I could come up with my own scam, Billy Bob. But if the SEC ever traced it back to me, they say, Brendan, you're fucking with the stock market again, my friend, and I'd go to jail. And, Billy Bob, I do not want to go back to jail. Well, what's to stop me from doing this without you? I'm going to cut you in big, Billy Bob. Real big. Well... Oh, no, no, no. no, no. What, me. You, let me think on it. Okay. All right? Sure. Good. God has spoke to me, Bissell. He told me about building his church, and they're trying to cut in on me. It's not fair. Baby, it's not fair. And the Lord has spoken. Hey, Reverend. Lucas, where the hell you been? I told you to be here an hour ago. I'm sorry, Reverend Billy Bob. I was stuck in traffic. Shut up. Cars out there. Shut up and Listen. Now, it seems we got ourselves a problem with this Clarity fella and his newfangled church. That boy's giving me hemorrhoids. <laughs> He's got to go. I think you should get up there on TV and insult the shit out of him. No, no, no. I want you to find some dirt on Clarity, even if you got to make it up. The boy's acting a little too white for his own good. Sure thing, Reverend Bill Bob. Oh, Lucas? Get some pictures. We're going to hang this boy by his nuts till he's singing soprano. <laughs> it's great to be famous. Don't let it get to your head. Too late. <laughs> You're Dr. Clarity, aren't you? That's right. Well, I just want to thank you. Thank you for your spiritual leadership. He brought happiness and fulfillment. Oh, it was my pleasure. My Street, I'm Just think, it wasn't long ago I was cleaning out their offices, and now I'm cleaning out their wallets.
Are any of you girls religious? The long and short of the situation is that the religion business is categorized in what we marketing people call a mature industry. In a mature industry, there's very little, if any, room for market growth. Therefore, the only way to get more business is to steal it away from the competition. That is what the Preferent Church did to you in a very successful marketing campaign. And that is what we must do to them. Cardinal McCarthy is right in pointing out that we should fight them as a group. My staff and I are therefore recommending that we call this group the Alliance Religions. And our slogan, which illustrates the basic message of our ad campaign, will be... The Alliance Religions, because God knows what he's doing. What about Allah? In certain niche markets, we'll replace the word God with Allah. Also in a mature industry, it is very important to first run promotions, to lure prospective customers. This is Big Burger's Merry Meal. It's sold in Big Burger restaurants across the country as a smaller meal for children. We are currently in negotiation with Big Burger Corporation to rename it Big Burger's Holy Meal. These are meal cards to be passed out in every church and temple across the country and stamped every time a member of the congregation attends services. When a member has six stamps, he or she will be able to redeem it at any participating Big Burger for a free Holy Meal. What is this uh, Merry Meal? Is it kosher? Yes. Now another promotion we'll be running are free trips to either Rome or Jerusalem. Hi, Reverend. You want me to check in? No, I'm back at the hotel. He's having some party. No, there's nothing worth photographing. Just a lot of drinking, drugs, tits and ass. Nothing unusual for a preference. Right, I'll call you if he does something bad. Just take me. Take me. Hi, I'm Jose Torres. As a former light heavyweight champion of the world, I've knocked out some pretty tough customers. Every time I threw a punch, I pray to God I connected. That's why I simply pray to God. I'm not ashamed to say it. You too can pray to God and get exactly the same results. Go to an Alliance church and pray for forgiveness of all your sins. And also become eligible to win a full free case of smelling salts autographed by me, Jose Torres. The Alliance religion. Because God knows what he's doing. It looks like we've had a more profound effect on society than I thought. <sighs> Maybe too profound. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Fine. Thank you. Yes. Appendix, is it down? Pain's on the wrong side. Well, well, what do you think it is? From all I can tell, there's nothing wrong. Say what? There's nothing physically wrong with you, Dr. Clarity. And what are we doing to boost donations at that level? 
Well, we've initiated cocktail hours after every sermon, which have proved enormously popular. It gives the minister a chance to mingle with the congregation, and by charging $4 a drink, we're making a bundle. That's very good. Now tell me, is our mission in Beverly Hills still our most profitable one? Oh, yes, but the Greenwich, Connecticut mission is catching up. Morris. Peggy, I'm busy. What is it? You have a visitor. A visitor? Peggy, you know better than to... It's your mother. What? M Mom? You look, uh, different. It's called age, Morris. It's most noticeable when you don't visit your mother too often. Now, what is this about you being on television and not telling me? I had to hear it from Mrs. Bentley. Do you know how embarrassing that is? Uh, gentlemen, could you excuse us? Uh, I'll call you later. We'll finish up this meeting. <laughs> Ma, you traveled 500 miles to tell me that? No, I came to see what you were up to. Well, as you can see, I'm doing quite well. <laughs> you call this well? Who's your decorator? What idiot's taste? Where are you staying? With you, of course. No, uh, Ma, you wouldn't want to stay with me. I'm, uh, I'm not going to be very good company these days. I wouldn't have it any other way. All officers Hello, Mr. Washington. Debbie Cosgrove, your court-appointed attorney? I don't need no court-appointed shit. Of course you do. You're facing some very serious charges here. I'm innocent, baby. <laughs> I'll be out of here tonight. My bitches will get my bail. There is no bail. This is your third offense. They caught you soliciting for two prostitutes, and when they searched your Cadillac... There ain't no Cadillac, there's a link. Whatever. When they searched your Lincoln, they found two ounces of cocaine in your glove compartment. And they've got you for possession and intent to distribute. Now, that's a capital offense in the state. Don't sweet talk me, Mama. You are going to have to take this seriously, Mr. Washington. Now, we can either beat the drug charge by claiming illegal search and seizure, or we can beat the distribution charge by proving that the two ounces were for personal consumption. Point is, can we prove that you're not a pimp? I ain't no pimp. I'm their manager. I don't care what you call it. The judge is going to think that you're a pimp, and we have to prove that you're not. That judge is going to let me off, man. And then he's going to shake my hand. Well, and... I'm so glad that you're so confident. Sure. Because I'm a religious devotee. And so is that judge. You know, Brother Ian Clarity, he's my main dude. Excuse me? Uh, Brother Ian says that uh, I ain't no pimp. Uh, I'm just being a true prefer, baby. That's right, a true preference. And ain't no judge ever convicted someone of practicing his religion, man. And you know why? Religious freedom, that's why. <laughs> Religious freedom. That's why them pilgrims came over here for. And that's what this country's all about. Hey, hey, where you going? The court will appoint you another attorney. Hey, no way. I want you. I mean, you fine looking. I mean, you got a lot of talent. I could manage you, we could make lots of money, and we could be helping society. I can't represent you. Conflict of interest. Conflict this, bitch. Nobody says no to Leroy Washington. You don't made a mistake, baby. I got friends, lots of friends on the outside to take care of you. Don't get mad, baby. Just get even. I always wonder when we're apart. Is there something connecting our hearts? Like a live wire, maybe a string That binds us stronger than a wedding ring But well, you know how lost and alone I've been Cause you've been there on your own And still you work so hard Just to pull me through And when it's all said in love You know you're still the only one Oh, what's a woman like you? Back, man. I'm sick. Give me a break. I'm sick. You're sick. I've got wife, five kids, mistress, gambling debts. Oh, let go of me. I'm your twin. I'm a thorn in your side.
talk to me, wise man. What do you know about pains in my side? I am the ugly side of the truth, the one you'd rather forget. But I'm staring at you now. You've got to deal with me now. What is the truth, prophet? The truth is that there's a big man and a beggar in every one of us. That's what balances the soul. Don't tip the balance. Either you're one smart con man, <laughs> or you're on to something. I'm just living day by day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a good day. Come, hey, get it. It's yours. Get it too little. It's yours. <laughs> Show me town. Take it where he wants to go. <laughs> Show the whole town. <laughs> Isn't that what they call insider trading? <laughs> That's such a nasty picture. Here's the pictures. Oh. I actually caught the song bitch giving money to a beggar. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. We'll take them to cleaners with this. You really think so? Brother Billy, you let old Brendan work his magic. We'll let the media do our dirty work. <laughs> Sweet thing. Sweet thing. Uh, Leroy Washington told me to pay his respects. He says it's time to feel good about yourself. How do you feel? One of your disciples did this. Well. Get out. I am. Um... Get out. I'm sorry. I got problems. We got to talk. Morris. Morris, I'll give you two minutes. One would be much better. Thank you. Um, you know that business that I started? It hasn't worked out so well. Oh, yes, that business of yours. Yes, I've been getting some complaints. Yeah, I started my own religion, and it really got out of hand. Oh, Morris, you've got to stay out of the... out of the religion business. It'll hurt you. Look what it's done to... look what it's done to me. You told me to go into business. You gave me signs. Signs, Morris? I don't give signs. People think I give signs. And they say the silliest things in my name. It's really very disconcerting and quite mean. Well, how do I get out of this, please? I don't know how you rectify that situation, Morris. I haven't the slightest idea. You people have to solve your own problems. Now, go away. Morris. Morris. Hey, man, how do you feel? Better. Listen, Morris. 
We've got to talk. I know. It's the pain in your side, your conscience giving it to you, huh? How do you know? I think I'm starting to get the same ailment, except it's in my head. It seems my better half is haunting me. And don't I know it? It's good you and I got a better half. Join the Preferred Church. Come grow with us. The Preferent Church, because it's time to feel good about yourself. Who is it? It's Sam, Mrs. Cogman. I'm here to see Morris. Sam? The nice girl from the office? Aren't you starting work a little early? This is an emergency. So, would you like a cup of coffee? What else going on out here? Hey, Sam, what, what are you gonna doing? What are we going to do? About what? This is a disaster. We have to issue a statement. Yeah, Ian and I knew something like this was going to happen. All right, we'll have a press conference. What a kind gesture. I could tell Ian was a nice man. Too nice. You mean this is bad? It's not good. Since when is charity a sin? Since I advertised it as a sin. Can you imagine Ian giving money to the poor? He wouldn't piss on a beggar if he were on fire. Well, I think you're going to see a new Ian Clarity from now on. And a new Morris Cotton. Sam, what would you pull up a chair? Yes. Have a bagel. Have a lemon. Come on, Sam. Thank you for coming. Dr. Clarity was supposed to be here today, but Mr. Codman insisted on answering to these charges alone. He'd like to make a brief statement to you before answering your questions. I suppose I should say that Dr. Clarity had a brief lapse of bad judgment when he gave to that beggar. But that's not true. Now, if anything, Ian Clarity demonstrated good judgment. See, Ian and I are nothing but used car salesmen selling an inferior product. The product looks awfully good from the outside, but there's no engine underneath the hood. It can only go downhill. And that's where we're all going, is downhill. Our society, our, our quality of life, has become so bastardized by a need for immediate gratification that we have become susceptible to the greatest of hoaxes, the worst of motives. Chucky boy, send me the latest figures in the Preference Church. With them gone, it leaves the religion market wide open. I want you to hire some marketing people. We can start our own religion with all the money we just made. Got that, bub? They're picketing us down there. It's about time. Mm. Too bad it's for the wrong reasons. So what are you going to do now? I'm thinking about maybe... Getting the receptionist to sleep with me out of sympathy. <laughs> That's executive thinking, Ian. You've learned a lot about business. Thanks, I would all to you. My pleasure. What are you going to do after that? I'm going to see if I can teach philosophy, if any college will take me. And what about yourself? Well, you know me, I can't think beyond tomorrow. And when it's all said and done, you know you're still. topic is the preference church. They espouse selfishness, but in the end, they gave their assets to the homeless. Call you on the end. Those idiots! I thought my money was going for greed and selfishness, and instead they give it to the homeless! Hell, they don't even have houses! Where do they think they're going to buy with that money? Furniture? We get the best connections. We got the lowest prices. From the Diamond Jim's Jewelry Warehouse. Get to learn more about our home equity line of credit. We've taken the hatchet to prices at Indian Jim. Have you tried new raspberry spaz with the funny Damn, grand pants? Hi, uh, is Debbie here? No, she doesn't live here anymore. 
Where'd she go? I don't know. She said something about a foreign country. She... Hey, <laughs> aren't you Morris Codman, founder of the Preferent Church? Yeah. Listen, I'm trying to screw my landlord out of some rent money. You have any suggestions? I've got to go. Passenger Joni Shea, please come to the information desk. Passenger Joni Shea, please come to the information desk. What's your name, please? Morris Codman. Non-smoking? Non-smoking. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Tropic Tours, flight 505, now boarding at gate 12. Tropic Air Tours, flight 05, now boarding at gate 12. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing here? I don't know. I guess I just had this burning desire to go someplace far, far away from here. You're kidding. I just bought a ticket to the same port of call. Flight 702, claim your baggage at Carousel 3. Flight 702, you. claim your you know baggage that. at Carousel 3. But I love you. Excuse me. Listen, did you guys realize that you have an image problem? Um, that's why your religion isn't growing. Look, I can help you. Come here. You see? You look like a fool. Now, what you need is a good marketing campaign. <laughs> You're right. I look like an idiot. Precisely. I shouldn't be seen in public. No, wait. wait you need my advice. Are you through? Sorry. And that's good enough. 